All right, YouTube, Repo 1064. Pumps are going off. Out here in the secret broadcast cave. So I've seen a lot of comments, and this idea keeps coming up that some people were born to go to hell. And that's simply not true. We were all born to go to hell. Yeah, I know, right? That's a rough statement to hear, but it's true. Each and every single human being that was ever born since Adam and Eve was born in sin. And to be in sin means you cannot be in the presence of God. So every single human being, therefore, was born with a destination of hell. How do you fix that? There is only one way. There has always only been one way. And that's through Jesus. Now, he's got it set up to God as a problem. He's got a huge problem. He's got these people that are being bored every day. So what does he do? He comes here in the person of Jesus Christ and dies on the cross to pay the penalty. And he offers you a cup. And all you have to do is accept that cup, the understanding and the knowledge that Jesus, God, Christ Almighty, God Almighty, came here to die on a cross to pay for our sins. It's that simple. It is that simple. Um, you don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the most understanding. All you have to do is know that Jesus came here and died for your sins. And that saves you. Jesus saves you. Salvation is of the Lord, lest any man shall boast. So I wanted to clear that up. I kind of waited. I was going to do a video yesterday, but I kind of waited until today because today is Shabbat 11 on the Torah calendar. And so Shabbat being the 11th month and the 11th day, meaning there are 47 days left in the year. And it is still 5783 until March because God turned time back from September the 15th to March the 17th. Both pumps are going off. And so with that in mind, yes, the Gregorian calendar, we are in 2024. I think that's why you will see this understanding that people will have that Psalms 123 is for the year 2023, but I think Psalms 123 is for the year 5783, and Psalms 124 is for the Gregorian year of 2024. That's why 20. there is this catching away that happens in, in Psalms 123, and there's this catching away that happens in Psalms 124, because it's the same event. It's the same event because the calendars are off by 75 days. The Gregorian calendar and the actual calendar that God used is off by 75 days and 18 hours. And I'll show you that here in the pictures. Let me get into them. All right. Where are we at now? We are now on, what's the date? Today is the 22nd. On the 25th. When you start the year on the day of equal parts, March 17th being the first day of the year, and you count out your days, uh, we wind up with Shabbat 11 being on January the 25th. Shabbat 11, because of the six-month overlay, also is represented in the month of Av. So that's very important because a lot of – it's a mirror. It's a mirror. What happened – in the last six months, happened in the first six months. The dates almost line up perfectly, and the only reason they don't is because, like, February will have 28 days or 29 days some years. March will have 31, but the Enoch timeline has 30, 30, 31, 30, 30, 31, like I've showed you before. And it's a simple count right here. Nissan has 30, IR has 30, and Savan has 31. It always does. Even when you roll time back, six months. It always did. But our Gregorian calendar does not. So it's hard to line them up. But you see here in the month of Av, which you can see just like the ninth of Av happens in Shavat. So that could very well be um, Shavat 11, just because of the way the, the, the calendar lines up. But you see that's Tisha B'Av. A lot of people are looking at Tisha B'Av 
for a rapture. So we overlay the six months. Now, come down here. <clears throat> Where am I at? Right here. There had to be a reason why we were seeing so much 1111. Everybody was. It was everywhere. It was on receipts. I have had them on receipts. I've had them, um, you know, my phone will be put away for three hours. And at some point, for some reason, I decide to pull it out. And you can strike that up to, you know, my brain saying, hey, 11-11, but you can't make that happen on a receipt, which we saw that happen so many times. And so we see 11-11 everywhere. On this timeline, that lines up with January the 25th. There is no other timeline, um, including Torah calendar, where their date lands before my date. My date, or the date that I see as the head of the year of March 17th, is always the first date. And when you count out each month, I don't know how they wind up with a date sooner than mine. So when they do, that's when I know the Bible verse that comes into play where they thought to change times and seasons and do things with the timeline, I know when they did it because I've been in line with them since back here. Our timelines have been perfectly in line since all the way back here on September the 15th, which was the Feast of Trumpets. Then we went forward to Yom Kippur, Tishri 10, Nisan, uh, Tishu 10 and Nisan, September the 25th. They all wind up tabernacles the day Jesus was born. September the 29th at nightfall becoming the 30th. Jesus circumcised on the last day of tabernacles. And we went forward, we saw, as we went forward, we saw um, Haggai speaking of Kislev 24, stepping stones. We've had so many high watch days from back here, each one being a stepping stone to the other side. And then here we come up to, um, again, Shabbat 11. Now that happens in three days. January the 25th. Could that also be a mirror to the 9th of Av? Be very interesting. So I, it's, for me, it's a very high watch day, September the 11th. To be Shabbat, like Isaiah 53's channel uh, shows. Uh, when Israel was recognized by all the trees, and that happens on January the 29th. And I believe, and I'd have to ask him, I was just texting him, I forgot to ask him. Uh, he's out in the United Kingdom, I think, but I believe it was January the 29th in, is it 1950 or 1949, when all the trees were there uh, to witness Jerusalem becoming the capital of Israel at that point. So we have Shavad 11, which is also off. Could that be to be off if it overlapped? Again, I haven't worked out the numbers perfectly, but where's off at? There's the ninth of off, which is Tisha be off, and then there's to be off, which is the 15th of off. It's also the second Pentecost. So you see how things line up from that timeline overlaid to this timeline. So that's another high watch day, January the 29th. So we have the 25th, we have the 29th. We go forward and we have Purim. Now Purim must land 30 days before the cross. What happens when you add an extra day to the Gregorian year? You have to change Purim. You have to change Purim to February the 29th because if you leave it on the 28th, then it is now 31 days to the cross, 31 days to Passover. I know the world is viewing a different timeline because they moved Passover way out. I don't know where they found all those extra days to put into the calendar, but they are calling the to be Shavat, the Festival of Trees, as January the 25th. That's weird because that's four days before what I call it, and I call it on Shavat 11, January the 25th. So how do they wind up four days before here? And we know that the Festival of Trees should land or is supposed to land 30 days prior to Purim. So you have Festival of Trees, 30 days later you have Purim, 30 days later you have Passover. But somewhere in here, they messed with time. They changed it. 
That's the law of the Bible. The Bible says this, not me. That's what the Bible says. So where did they get all of these extra times and these extra days from? I don't know. So something to that verse where they thought you changed times, they've really done it this year. They've moved it out 23 days, a lot. So Shabbat 11 is the day they're calling Festival of Trees, January or the January 25th, and then to be Shabbat, the Festival of Trees, January the 29th. 30 days later, just like we're told, Purim must land on February the 29th. I show February the 28th because that's accurate for three years, and then one year it's not accurate. And then we go 30 days, 30 more days, and we wind up over here at the cross on March 30th. So let me go forward from here. This is how we determine the head of the year. The two witnesses are the sun and the stars. That's the two witnesses. And it's right here, Earth on Earth, on March the 16th, will always be the day of equal parts. It never changes from creation till now. And you can go into date and time and 600 years from now, it doesn't change. But the sun will move. The sun processes through the constellations to tell the story of God. All right. Somebody sent me a comment. Is this in Discord? This might be Discord. Hi, Reef Man. Just say I saw a connection with the festival. Yeah, they're seeing a connection with the festival of trees. Now, <clears throat> and Paul's conversion. Now, I don't know if this is accurate or not. This is uh, somebody was told this. Is this true? I don't know. But isn't it super interesting if it is? Paul's conversion, Saul's conversion, Saul was walking along uh, from Jerusalem to Damascus. And on his way, I would say it was three days before because he was blind for three days and he regained his sight when he met up with a preacher or a priest uh, in Damascus. But he was blinded for three days. And it says here, just to say, I saw a connection with the Festival of Trees and Paul's conversion. The man who was blind after the first touch of Jesus, he saw man. Um, so there, I don't know if this comment is 100% accurate. I found the verses. Uh, there were two separate occasions where somebody was made blind. I don't think it was Paul in both of them, but we'll we'll read it here in a moment. But let's read through their comment. The, the man who was blind and after the first touch of Jesus, he saw men walking around like trees. I found that passage. Then the Lord touched him again. Why would Jesus have to touch him twice? Why? Jesus is God Almighty. They just have to touch the uh, hem of his robe to, to gain uh, uh, healing from Jesus, right? Why would Jesus have to touch him twice? The second time he was made completely whole. Mark 8, 24 could be the rapture because we're going to get our new bodies. Shalom, Sandra from England. Okay, here we are. Now, here's the question. Is this Saul that they're speaking of? And he came to Bethsaida. Now, from Jerusalem to Damascus, it is 150 miles. It takes 14 days to walk those 150 miles. I, I did some calculations. Two weeks. 14 days from Jerusalem to Bethsaida. Now, I'm sorry, from Jerusalem to Damascus. Now, Bethsaida is actually exactly halfway in between. So, Saul was on the road from Bethsaida or from Jerusalem. Halfway through, he was blinded. Now, I'm going to guess just because of everything we've seen, that he was blinded for 84 hours, for three and a half days. And that when he arrived in Damascus, he regained his sight. And he come to Bethsaida, and they, and, and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit in it on his eyes, and put his hands upon him, he asked if he saw aught, or if he saw. And he looked up and he said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands upon his eyes and made him look up, made him look up. 
And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into town nor tell it to uh, to anyone in town. So <clears throat> this had to be Jesus, right? This had to be Jesus that's healing uh, uh, this person, which is a mirror image to Saul. The road to Damascus, the distance from Jerusalem to Damascus is around 150 miles. So if Saul was traveling by foot, the trip would have taken him about two weeks. I took pictures down here below the word West Bank is Jerusalem. And then, of course, up there you can see Damascus halfway in between up there by Safed. That lake that's there is Bethsaida. That's the halfway point between the two. Somewhere on the road between Bethsaida and Damascus, I'm going to guess three and a half days in, he was blinded by Jesus. Because Jesus came to him and said, why do you uh, persecute me? The time that they did this, there, there's a lot of speculation, but their speculation is it was approximately one year after Jesus went to the cross. Up here you can see Bethsaida, the Bethsaida Junction by that water. And it finishes up there in Damascus. All right. To be Shabbat, the beginning of potential. To be Shabbat, known as the new year of the trees, is the first stage in this process. It occurs on the 15th of the Jewish month of Shabbat, 30 days prior to Purim. You saw what I showed you previously. 30 days prior to Purim. If they say Purim is on March the 23rd, then to be Shabbat, the Jews should not be recognizing it as being on um, January the 25th. They should be recognizing it as being on February the 23rd, but they are not. They are recognizing to be Shabbat to happen on January the 24th at nightfall, becoming January the 25th. Remember what I showed. Actual to be Shabbat is kind of why I waited until the end of the day here today to do this was uh was to uh just in case they were right <laughs> i don't i don't uh, know what timeline god's going to use but uh the festival trees in fact does not start for another three days it won't start until uh, january the 29th four days all right one should start teaching and learn let's see starting from the day of purim which is 30 days before Passover. Purim is 30 days before Passover. Festival of Trees is 30 days before Purim. Where did they find the extra 23 days from? I have no idea. They're going to celebrate Purim this year on March 23rd. But if they say Festival of Trees happens on uh, January the 25th, they have to say that Purim starts on February the 25th, and then Passover starts on March the 25th. But somehow they found all this extra time. I don't know how they did it. This year, Passover, let's see here. Yeah, Purim will begin on, in March instead of February, and Passover will begin in April instead of March. And Festival of Trees will be, instead of 30 days away, it'll be something like, Wow, 52 or 53 days away. I don't know what they did. They broke their own uh, mathematical rules here. The Bible is super clear. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servants. We see that they are changing this stuff. We have to learn to number our days. Um, the festival... Now, Shavat 11, like I showed you, is on January the 25th, which is interesting because that is a Thursday. We've had a lot of dreams of people seeing a Thursday for a rapture. But on the 29th is the Festival of Trees. It happens on a Monday at the end of <clears throat> Sunday. It happens on a Monday. <clears throat> oh, I saw this. Uh, Garrett, the news guy, was talking about this. Cicadas are uh, coming out. And what's weird about this year is there is a class of cicada 
that has a cycle that's 13 years long and another class that has one that's 17 years long and they are loud. I don't know if you've ever been near cicadas, but down here, up here in Florida, at the top of Florida, we get to hear a lot of these guys. And this year it's going to be particularly loud when they emerge because uh, and they're, they're, they're underground for 13 years, one class and then another species is underground for 17 years and the numbers work out to where every so often both of them emerge at the same time from uh from underground both species come out and this year 2024 that is going to happen um i can't remember what they oh eight the last time they synchronized was in 1803 so imagine that that's that is what is that that's 220 years ago 221 years that's that's quite a while there's that almost 222 right there i wanted to show you the torah calendar in fact shows to be shavat right there uh, to be shavat the new year of trees to happen on now this one is showing the 26th january the 26th so um i show it happening on january the 29th so it's a few days off on this Torah calendar. And then um, Shavat 11, I show it on the 25th. They show it on the 22nd at nightfall, 11-11. Earthquakes have been going crazy here. I've, I've, been, uh, I've been seeing this. They've been going nuts here for a little while now. Where are we at? Eight minutes ago, 57 minutes ago, one hour ago, two hours ago, three hours ago, four hours ago. They, they, they've been off the charts here the, the past, uh, and they're all hitting here in China. They're all hitting up here in China. So, or in Asia, is that China or is it Asia? Yeah, Europe. Yeah, they're all hitting up there. So it's, it's been quite wild. All right. Where are we at? Oh, baby Weston. Weston Wyatt. We brought him home yesterday. Uh, six pounds, 17 ounces. Was it six pounds? Seven? Yeah, six. No. Yeah, six pounds, 17 ounces. Born or no, it was. I, I don't even remember now. <laughs> he was born on. Uh, January the 21st, I think it was six pounds. Of, uh, I don't know. I'm going to be in trouble now because I can't remember. The time from the new year that we recognize on the Gregorian calendar is exactly 75 days and 18 hours off from when uh, the Enoch timeline picks up for the new year at nightfall on March the 16th. So, um, oh, he was born at 317. Yeah, he was born at 317, and he weighed um, 6 pounds, 14 ounces, I think it was. So, he was tiny, He's still tiny. But you can see that the difference between the two, now that 75 days is kind of a big deal. That's the same uh, amount of time. I just took a picture of that. <laughs> All right. So you see the high watch days that are coming up. Nobody says that's when it's going to happen. Nobody knows 100%. I have a feeling at the last moment, just before it does happen, um, maybe three days, just like uh, Saul on the Damascus Road. I think there's a three-day warning that it's going to be abundantly clear to us. Uh, nobody else will see it. They won't understand it. They'll just be like, that's a huge event. But we'll see an uptick in everything dreams and visions earthquakes um understanding and uh so we just keep watching <clears throat> uh i just thought i'd come on here and, and put that out there now both pumps are going <laughs> out here in the back cave all right repo man 64 like comment share subscribe and uh remember jesus saves that's it nothing else no good works will do it for you jesus saves so just keep watching. And uh, if you find anything, put it in the Discord because I do read. You can see I do read them. I don't always have time to respond. Dealing with a little baby in there. So he's such a cute baby, too. I, I, I was surprised. Not surprised, but you know what I mean? It's just he's really cute. Like, awesome. I don't even know what to say to that. Anyway, Repo Man 64. We'll talk to you again later.